Hello. Now, I'm feeling a bit rough this evening. I've got a bit of a grizzly, grizzly, gravelly voice. So I'll be using my uh, Stepenzo 9000 app uh, to fill in for me uh, as and when my voice gets uh, too dry because this app can uh, cover periods of talking of up to 59 minutes. It's very effective. So let me bring in uh, the first of my guests, uh, one of my uh, semi-regulars, who pops up between people's legs. It's the gooch. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> Dude, I just like try and better those uh, every time I can. Um, how you What's doing? up? How are you? Oh, I'm glad to be here. It's always good to be, you know, invited onto your on your channel. It's a good oh, yeah, time. Man. You're always you're always you're always welcome, and uh, love having you on. I think actually, you are also the first person on YouTube to ever interview me. So um, mm. yeah, there you go, man. Nice. You will always nice. have that number one spot. Um, well. Okay, <laughs> uh, fresh from his commando combat course, uh, we also have the man who shaved his head for my American History X stream. Now he's gone full full combat regalia. It's coming back in, see? Yeah, <laughs> it's been nothing to dispel the rumors that you may have joined a, a far right organization. Uh, <laughs> I just got nothing. Uh, <laughs> I hate you, Lance. The fact that you, you recommend the stupid Shogun show to me, I get drunk and I ate this entire freaking carton of ice cream. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love Shogun so much because of Lance. Said it, you said it. Um, <laughs> you said it's ice cream with alcohol, right? Yes. Well, this is peanut butter. Look, peanut butter explosion. It, it, wow. it's, it's on sale two for five dollars. I'm the victim here. Okay. That's um, <laughs> ice cream with alcohol. Before I uh, yeah. bring in uh, my next look, two guests, Mr. Boss and Vodka. Let's just see who's in the <laughs> chat. We've got Nick, Hale, Drew Gordon. Good to see you again, buddy. Oh, yeah. Netflix ruined that book as expected. Imagine if Peter Jackson truncated most of the fellowship. Well, we're going to get on to that. If you're, you're talking three-body uh, contact. That's yeah. kind of what D&D &D did. Yeah, well, there's, there's still a good show to be made there somewhere. Dan Candy's in the house. Good to see you, Dan. And uh, oh, we've already had a look at that super chat. All right, let me get my guests in, the rest of my guests in, and then I'll get to that super chat. Northern English Bastard, how are you? I am fine. I'm just having a nice little uh pants here. All just right, finally got my video. Nice. You're, actually, yeah. you're actually gracing us with your presence as well, showing okay. solidarity with your uh, American History X. Uh, yeah. Haircut. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm balding, I'm balding so. Ever since I uh, lost my hair, became all right wing. So that's my choice. Oh, it's not like, yeah. But yeah, it's good to see yeah. you all. Hello, Gooch. Hello, Blue Collar again. Hello, Lance. Hello, everyone in chat, including Nix, my I just saw uh, you. Enemy. I just saw you an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a long time. I, it does. <laughs> last but by no means least, uh, the man who looks like the younger double for Grizzly Adams, <laughs> if you check my <laughs> intro sequence, it appears like he's got really big hair. Uh, but in fact, it's shorter. It's the Penzo. Yeah, I did check. Could cut all my hair off. That picture is a lot, a little outdated. But it's funny because my dad was obsessed with Grizzly Adams. He wanted to be Grizzly Adams. He kind of looked like Grizzly Adams. So that's pretty cool. Maybe uh, they'll do they'll do a Grizzly Adams reboot. I mean, it's got to be imagine, better. Imagine be better than Santa Santa Claus. They'll make imagine him up. They'll make, they'll make Santa him a Claus side with side. lots of guns and cow dressed like a cowboy. That was my dad. Who would you get to play? Uh, Grizzly Adams in a modern remake. Kurt Russell. Yeah, man. That is 2,000%. Spot on. His I hair think. is so goddamn majestic, man. Especially yes. when it gets all Every, long in his beard. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, everything uh, about him is majestic. Not I can, uh, it's just so see, cool. The thing is, my hair does look like that if I wash and condition and blow dry it. It will look like amazing, like that Kurt Russell mane. But if I don't do that after a few days of wa not washing it, it starts looking like John Wick, well, like I said, he, he was greasy best, and, and he was straight. Best, he was and the best dark. part of Monarch, man. He's why I watch Monarch for. Dude, Gooch has a huge head of hair. He has like cholo hair. I yeah. do not. Re I pictured you being completely bald, like a blue collar under yeah. that hat. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I got. Uh, I got cool. Dan yeah, Candy sent wanna... me a super chat. Yeah, you got like thick Mexican style hair. Hell oh, you yeah, got, that's a good head full of hair, man. Cholo like, hair. Head full of hair. Let me read this oh, yeah. out before I have to start muting people. So, Sorry. Lance, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid three body spoilers. 
Let me know if I should bail on this stream. Uh, I mean, I'd just recommend bailing on three three body. Uh, that, yeah. Be yeah, I don't think we um, we're going to spoil too much. I watched the first two episodes to kind of no. know what Lance is talking about. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll speak in vague generalities. I won't spoil anything. Well, well I, I don't plan on spoiling it. So, Dan, you'll probably be all right. If I think I'm going to say a spoiler, I'll try and prefix it so you can have that mute button ready. But uh, I think you're good. Uh, really? Welcome to. The Nielsen ratings, uh, care of the uh, Grizzly Adams fan club. <laughs> yeah. um, Dude, we we're going to watch that movie. We're going to be getting into a few different topics tonight. Just going to remind people uh, coming up this Sunday at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, no, 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 hang on, UK time. Got to remember that. Uh, I've got my five days at Memorial Special. That's on Apple Plus. I'm going to need a couple of. Uh, co-hosts so i'd ask my regulars present if you haven't watched the show and you could be on that stream we fancy being on it remind me the date one more time it's this coming sunday sunday it's not um, a big commitment because you've only got to watch five episodes it's a mini series it's not a series yeah. uh it's also fucking good so it's a good use of your. Is thought. this the one that you were? Yeah, this is the one you were talking about last night about. It's a really yeah. heavy drama, right? It is. I mean, yeah. I, I can't recommend it. Yeah, the Katrina highly. flood. Yes, we, Katrina. Yeah, we talked about it on one of these Tuesdays. We I did. See. I I sort of plugged it while I was watching it because I was just so blown away by it. Um, the thing yeah. is, I want to do it, but I have so much to do before I leave out of town next weekend. Mm. And I know I've got to watch Godzilla versus Kong for Monday, Easter Monday. Yes, I know yeah. I've got to work on my God darn Renfield video, which is going to be done by the time I leave out of town. The idea is it will That's, come out Monday. Ask you, uh, you also have to help me design eight. my. You got to help me design my book cover, which needs doing very soon. So <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I can do that this week. Yeah. Oh man, you're a legend. Um, Send me uh, what you need. Uh, I think we 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 left uh, somewhere in the middle of like unfinished. Not, yeah. Uh, well, funny enough, this is my first ever play, which was about the Hillsborough football disaster. This is the brochure, oh, wow. so I need to take oh. a photograph of this brochure because this is going to be the cover of the book. So um, okay. I got to put I got to put this on the front, and uh, maybe the same thing can go on the back. I think, but. Um, with a bit of a blurb, but so I don't know if the best thing is to take this on my phone and WhatsApp it to you, or uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, mm. but, uh, crucially important. I mentioned that now, of course, so I don't forget. It's okay, I'll remember. Yeah, so, yeah. What hang on, I, I did not get rid of that. <laughs> you said at the beginning, you're uh, your sore throat. It's right <laughs> here, but uh, yeah, no, you're untethered. Uh, I'm untethered tonight. Ah! You're, you're untethered <laughs> to give my voice uh, a bit of a rest. Yeah. As I told you before, Lance, it's like, you know, as, as much as you, you taught me about the whole post office thing as Americans, me and Enzo go through this, the whole Katrina thing, man, it's just like, we're watching it. Like, I wish I could do something, but such, such an embarrassment on our country. Consider, they, consider you know, yeah, consider they, we're, they, we're, we're the richest country in the world and the best country I, in the world. I live near the Gulf of Texas. I'm like an hour mm -hmm. away from the beach. Right. Hurricane's gonna happen. It's gonna happen yeah. eventually. Hurricanes are a thing, and uh, yeah, but the way we handled yeah. it though, was pathetic. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, yeah. The, I mean, the, the the level of unpreparedness and the fact that yes, you, you've got one of the best and biggest military forces yeah. on the planet, but you couldn't galvanize a fleet of helicopters and boats to save your own people. Fuck off, Dude, that man. Was something I kind of wanted to talk about about the Roadhouse remake that we forgot to mention was the location oh, of the yeah, bar. Yeah. Like, how long until that bar is wiped out from a fucking another yeah. hurricane, yeah. you know? That was the so, same set they used for Cobra Kai. When, so, uh, wow. really? Just, you went just, to go look just, for his stepfather. Um, yeah. All right, just Lance so you know, listen. We're going to refer to that movie only as Boathouse. <laughs> That's, yeah, right. Chode House is what I've been calling <laughs> it. Yeah. Boathouse. It's going to be called out. Boat House. Gonna be oh, what's so stupid is they didn't uh, copa mentioned that like why the fuck you, you call the, the bar the roadhouse okay whatever why don't you call the boat the boathouse instead it's just called <laughs> well, the I'll, boat. Tell you, I'll tell you what as we're as we're naturally seeping into it <laughs> let's yeah. uh let's let's start off tonight with the diabolical abortion that is Boathouse. Oh, now I thought he meant Gooch. Like he's showed. No, man, come on. Like, damn. Not a I, I, that's what I thought too. I was just like, oh, right, here we go. your <laughs> eyes light up like he was about to oh, say your name. <laughs> um, so I mean, oh, uh, let, let me just put in a couple of caveats. Okay, there have been 
some remakes of some old films that have been okay. Yes. So sometimes a remake isn't a bad thing because you're maybe updating it for a modern audience or you're yeah. you're updating the special can, effects. Can you name or, one? Can you name one? Your, yeah, I'll get there. Give me a chance. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I'm not against remakes per se, but yeah. but let's put the word remake aside. A film always has to stand as a movie in its own right. It's got to work as an existing narrative. It's got to work as a good film just on its own, okay? Yeah. And there is... I've seen all these friends of mine. I don't understand their mentality. I know what it is because they work in the industry and some of them probably want to work with Jake Gyllenhaal or they probably want to work with Doug Lyman one day. So they're all going, yeah, this is really good. This feels amazing on their, on their, on their social media. And I'm like, fuck off, man. You are talking horse shit. There is very little about this film. If anything that I can compliment it, the biggest problem with it is that, None of the narrative makes any sense, and there is no consequence for any action. There is no setup, therefore there is no payoff. It is just rubbish. And the the the, the fact that Doug Lyman threw a tantrum because it didn't get a cinema release, this is worse than an yeah. Italian Mad Max B movie. It's absolutely terrible, and it's not even so bad that it's good. It's just bad. Um I could give you 10 things straight away that are wrong with the movie, but one Big of the things. biggest, yeah, but one of the biggest there are a handful of problems. good things, but they're all little things. You there know? are, like, there are some fun moments, but the, the, I mean, Gary Bolter has sat, summed up really well, a bit like that bit in spinal tap where they go, there's a two word review for you, for your uh, shark sandwich album, shit sandwich. He's put shit house. Um, I couldn't sum it up better, Gary. The, the, the bit, one of the biggest problems is that he doesn't actually seem to take over the bar. He's never given, there's never a scene where he's introduced to the staff as this is yeah. the new guy in security. There's mm -hmm. never a scene where he briefs the staff. There's never yeah. a scene between him and his boss where he properly accepts the job. There's never a scene between him and the boss where she gives any insight into the background of, as to how she owned the bar or why it's important to her why she's emotionally invested in the bar, what's at stake for her, why he her should dad care. dad owned it or something. Yeah, but it's really vague. It's it's like one line in an earlier scene. It's it's There's nothing there. There's no... Um, it's just a series of set pieces with, with Conor McGregor walking around like himself. He was uh, walking uh, around like he was holding invisible pool noodles. I guess, yeah. Whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so has anybody not seen it, first of all? We all saw it, I think. <laughs> okay, so I'm yet to see it. Gooch, Gooch, you uh, go first uh, in a in 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 a short, concise manner. Give okay, us your well, views. We discussed this last yesterday on B Sup, um, and I summed it up. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal or Gyllenhaal, whatever his last name is, I, I can never remember. remember. Um, he looked like like a special needs person he just like was smiling like simple jack the whole movie through and it was just so disturbing how dumb he was like he just looked dumb uh and then like the 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 narrative there was no narrative like it was just like you said it perfectly there was like you were supposed to assume things throughout the whole movie yeah there was no explanation like like she had like this safe full of money like where did she get all this money from like because if like if they were actually going to take over this bar, they probably would have raided the bar and taken the safe. Like it's just, there's so many plot holes throughout, and there's so many questions that never get answered throughout this movie. And to me, it it's just seemed like an ABC Sunday night movie back in like 1984 or something. Like this movie, it's just so pathetic. And I I call this movie a beta movie. Like it's a beta trying to be an alpha, and and it's it just came out really pathetic. Uh, very good. Uh, let's go on to Stepenzo. I know you. We talked about it on your yeah. channel a bit. Well, the big things, uh, like little things, little little lines of dialogue, the change of setting, those are all cool. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal is an insane psychopath. Uh, Dalton is not like you know he's got he drives a shitty car and has like a nice car hidden away. He just drives a shitty car. He's suicidal. Uh, the other big problem I had with this movie that I don't think a lot of people have been mentioning is it was definitely felt like it was written by people who've never been in a 
freaking actual physical conflict of any <laughs> yeah. kind. Yeah. Because yeah. first of all, this is Florida. Where are the guns? Where are the like the citizens with guns who would just put a stop to this madness right away? Uh, this movie is seriously lacking on guns, and also the bad guys should have guns too because it makes them scarier. Yeah. Uh, and yes, yeah, Showgirls was a remake. It was a remake of All About Eve. Um. Um. But uh, <laughs> sorry, Drew. I'm sorry. Uh. But yeah. Also, the other big problem with the movie is like, um. I, you, you like for instance, you do some little twists, like make the make the owner uh, a foxy black woman. But why not combine her and the doctor and make the bar owner the new love interest? Because I call yeah. it like, I oh, called it a requel. It was not really a sequel, not really a remake. It's kind of like Desperado was to El Mariachi. It's kind of the same story again, but just bigger and stupider. I um, thought I thought she was actually going to be. Yeah, the love she had. I thought she it's, was instead of having out. one really strong female character who's yeah. the bar owner and the love interest and a woman of color. You have to make, um, you have to make uh, two nerfed characters, you know? Yeah. And dude, the, the doctor was a huge downgrade from uh, Kelly Lynch. And, so, and no offense. And this, actress, uh, this actress is actually a pretty good actress. I thought she's a I good actress. Every, she's the, pretty the, hot, but she, there's no, yeah. the there's woman no, who played the doctor right. is terrible. She can't act at all. She's beautiful. I mean, she's a pretty lady for sure. Don't get me wrong. Oh, no, I'm um, talking about Freddie here. The, the yeah, uh, bar yeah. owner. She's Freddy, hot. Freddy. Like, yeah, she's I, hot for sure. Yeah. She got she, them but, long but, ass legs, dude. The fucking, but she can act. She can act. This actress but can act. There's she no can. substance to any of those characters, though. No, right. No. Just, right. Like I said, you could have made more substance by combining those two characters. That would have been a huge, easy fix. Um, yeah, I mean, like, wh why she got, why she got a ball here, what, and, and why is there an American football helmet here? What, what is this? The backstory? Who are these I also didn't like that? a huge problem that we had was uh, combining, uh, turning Sam Elliott into a little, uh, a little, uh, a little black child who owns a bookstore. Which that she was the Sam Elliott. Because when the bookstores burn, that is like the inciting inciting in incident that makes him go crazy. Instead yeah, of like I, Sam I, Elliott having a knife in his chest, you know, it's like your friend, your I mentor. Don't really, I don't really buy that. Um, that that she's yeah. the Sam Elliott character. She's just a character in the remake who's nothing yeah. like Sam Elliott. True, exactly. That's um, kind of the joke, though. But it's it, like yeah. they were smart to keep Wade Garrett out of this film. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, well, I'll, I mean, um, they kept James Dalton out of the film too. This guy's named yeah. Elwood Dalton. Thanks uh, for mentioning good remakes, by the way. I would agree with these, uh, yeah. Northern. The Fly, The Thing, probably the best remake ever made. The Blob remake is very, very good. Uh, True Grit is also a good remake. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mr. Smith, we, you know. Um, yeah. Nikita is better than the Bridget Fonda assassin uh, film, hmm. I would agree. But yeah, yeah. Terrible. La Femme Nikita rules, man. Oh, dude, that's way last. better than Point, point of No Return. Yeah. Really not. But there's yeah, yeah. True Lies is a remake, yeah. You're right. True Lies, yeah. 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 So um there, there are some good remakes out there. Yeah, Showgirls yeah. is a remake of All About Eve. Trust yeah. me. Not that we're trying to say that Showgirls is uh you know. I like Showgirls, <laughs> all right. Unironically. Listen, I've got the Blu-ray with the extended scenes. Paul um. Verhoeven can do no wrong <laughs> in my eyes. He's never made a shitty movie. Anyway, uh, I digress. Okay. This guy, as this bad guy, um, Billy Magnuson, and he's again, he's a competent actor. I've seen him in other things. Was a nothing bad guy. Didn't make any sense. The whole plot triangle between him, his father in the prison, and the who corrupt never police meet. officer who kind of just got wheeled into the film for a paycheck. Clearly, just utter rubbish. Right, so like make the make the girlfriend the do the doctor the bar 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 owner, and instead the this guy's dad is the sheriff instead of like yeah, some faceless yeah. guy in prison. Yeah, exactly. Make him and make the sheriff a formidable. He villain. is no Talk Brad Wesley. Remember how Brad Wesley would like terrorize the neighbor yeah. and fly his helicopter over the dude's barn and scare all of his animals. Yeah, it's like, like it's just it's just like an annoying asshole. With he way was so such money an and asshole. So power. Yeah. And he had big titty parties yeah. all night at his tennis courts, like taunting the neighbor. <laughs> but he had good henchmen as well. That's what made him yeah. a little bit of a threat, though. He had like all this money. He could, he could get all these all these fucking heavies because he could afford it. And uh... yeah, he's bringing fucking franchises here. What was he bringing? Yeah. A Dillard's or what? What did he say? Well, the, because... well, the other the other piece that I that was really disturbing is the CGI with the fighting. Like you mm. had Post Malone. You saw it with Post Malone when he he punched the. Yeah. The big heavy guy in the beginning, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's CGI. Oh, okay. The CGI is... with the with the CGI with the car on the bridge, the CGI yeah. with the boat sinking. Oh, yeah. It's all terrible. It is terrible. heavily CGI. 
yeah it's like i can almost buy cgi for a car uh, like not not nature act not nature actors but yeah it's like when, when a punch like this we see like right here and it goes like that and it's like so many times it's like right here and it goes off like a couple times it, it's so obvious to fit i don't get that why add cgi to a punch i don't so th this is the other thing as well about the film right is he's supposed to come in and shake the place up he spends most of his time looking like he's zoning out on Ambien at the bar and occasionally tells this guy to step up. This guy should actually be the Patrick Swayze character. Well, like, he doesn't have the big it's my way or the highway scene. He also, like, there's no reason why the lady would think he should bounce. Like, he, she sees him at a UFC's cage match type thing. What does that have anything to do with bouncing a bar? Like, in the uh, first one, he goes I, I've to bounced bar. in my life, uh, and like, <laughs> none of this is, like... Well, it, 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 I I got quite the chuckle when he walked up to the kid and he's just like, uh, "What's with the the knuckles?" Because like, uh, "Oh, I box." I'm like, "That no. If you're a boxer, you wear wraps. You always right. have been trained to, to wear wraps." Don't right. give me like it was so pathetic. Everything about the the fight. Like I said the writers like, have like, never been in real fights. Or no, anything, it's, you know? like, it's no, yeah. It was it was it was bad. I mean, it, it's you know I don't want to spend too much time on this, but um. Because, you know, I prefer to spend our time promoting shit. But I was, I, I, you know, when I first heard about this movie, I wasn't, I didn't buy Jake Gyllenhaal as the, as the lead. But I thought, hey, you know, with some good writing, it could be good. He's, he's, he worked out for the part clearly, but it just, everything about it was wrong. Everything. It can, it can be a very convincing badass, but uh, the way you describe me, it doesn't sound like a character was in control. Uh, Dalton in the 80s actually had some kind of control. He had a, very dark, aggressive, sad that he had to sort of like keep uh, contained. There was, was a spiritual, there was, was like a, yeah. a spiritual side to him, wasn't yeah, there? Was, there was like a, a discipline as well. There was, it was like a good wise. Yeah. I know. I mean, that's where this one seems emotionless. Nice. Yeah. He seems cold. He's, you know, like a, like a, yeah. like a damn Dalton serial killer. Never or... called, yeah. Dalton was never called in the original. He, uh, he did something very bad in the past, which was very justified, but he still felt guilt. And he was uh, trying not to let that monster just uh, run out of control. He was very disciplined. He was a disciplined guy. Yeah. This movie was basically two psychopaths, two Terminators let loose on a small yeah. island town. Yeah. I actually <laughs> thought that the guys he took to hospital, which is a stupid scenario when you think about it, because that'd be the best time for them to jump him when he's driving yeah, the car. Strangle him. <laughs> but, but exactly. But I thought that because that scenario was so preposterous i thought okay these are not the bad guys henchmen these are his just friends now yeah these are just some troublemakers who he's now going to befriend and they're going to become his security force and actually that's kind of cool and i thought we keep coming where... up with way better ideas for I... this dumb ass movie because i'm a writer man and i'm better than the one <laughs> Go, let's talk about the writers on this okay because i want to get right into that so I'm calling you are... out fuckers i am there are three <laughs> oh, writers on this get them off. I... There are three writers on this. That's already three too many. Um, Anthony uh, Baragosi, uh, Chuck Mundry, and R. Lance Hill. Now, obviously, the one with the cool name, Lance, is the one with actually good credits and probably, you know, he did add Out for Justice um, and uh, he did the original Roadhouse screenplay. So they probably had to credit him. Right. Eight Million Ways to Die is not a, not a bad film, but he probably didn't do that much on this film right. okay he probably He's had to be characters from our lands yeah maybe he did a little bit he's quite he's getting on a bit now chuck chuck mundry okay has roadhouse <laughs> <is his> first, <laughs> first screenplay three others in development play dirty his family another remake related to jekyll another re another remake you know there's not a lot of originality there um deathless maybe that's about his career anthony uh, Baragosi did the nice guys, and that's it. That's a good film. That's kind yeah, of it's all right. Yeah, what the hell? it's all right. It's all right. It's a all nice. Right. Oh, it's also I've written by a... Shane Black, so he probably came in and did a polish on it. Yeah, so, Shane Black. Yeah, Shane Black probably. Yeah, that that probably fucking explains. I it. think Shane Black wrote it, Shit. and he was probably this guy was probably on sets to do rewrites. So, look now, I, I I won't take. I I don't blame them completely because. They may, for all we know, have turned over a really good script, and you might have had, however many producers. Well, let's uh, let's see how many there were. It's always fun to see how many producers are on there. How many? Uh, uh, what do you call? Um, 
however many producers there were on this film at the bottom of the ocean. A good start. Is that what yeah. we're going for? <laughs> That's it. A good start. Okay. So, or not enough. Um, so you got Joel Silver, very competent. Um, you got a line producer who would have been basically doing the budget. Uh, and then you got five other people. So it's five other people giving you notes. Um, Alison Winter, oh. who hey, she's done some good films, American Made. That's a good movie. Um, but not like loads. Um, and then Audi Attar, they have done Roadhouse and loads of Con Conor McGregor shit, Ultimate Fighter. So their their notes basically would have been get Conor McGregor in the film as much as possible. Um, and then Aaron Ooch, who did Rock and Roller, Speed Racer. So they've produced some good stuff. Oh, my God. But there's there's a lot of people with competing agendas here, and I think it showed. There you go, Trans dude. Oh my one. God! There's one, two, three, four, Jeez. Uh, five writers. So when they cooked uh, in the kitchen, there's Hillary Henkin. Yeah, there's right. There's like a more. There's like you click the arrow and you see the full credits. So Anthony Bargazzo screenplay and Chuck Mondry. Uh, yeah, the story is also by uh, Ryan Hill. Hill. No, we covered all them. We missed Hillary. We missed Hillary. Hillary Henkin. Who is she? What in the world? She did Wag the Dog. That's a good movie. That's a good movie. That is a long time ago. Romeo, 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 Romeo. Romeo. Right. Romeo. So she probably came in and did a polish. So yeah. there's a lot of fingerprints on this. So weird. Anyway, really it's a polished shit. So yeah, I mean, but that, yeah, 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 but that polish didn't fucking seem to work out from the way you were. You can't, you can't, you can't polish a turd. Um, yeah, that's it. That's I mean, me and Lance have come up with at least three or four ideas, like right off the top of our head, that <laughs> just like improve the story vastly. On oh, the one idea for me, just don't remake it. Oh yeah. yeah, that's good. Blue, did you you got anything you want to add about it before we? Oh, it's like I thought Enzo. I, I thought me and Enzo would talk about this for forty five minutes. Enzo made a three hour stream. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. It's pretty not, hard. About yeah. It. The only thing, Lance, I would ask you because you you know the industry. It's like this weird thing back in the day, 80s, 90s, we had blood squibs. If you have Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal fighting with their shirtless, if one point they stab a guy in the chest, right? Now, we know you're not going to stab Jake Gyllenhaal in the chest or Conor McGregor, but right. the CGI is so, so effing obvious. But, like, how do you do that without actually, like, make it look realistic? But, like, you can tell when he stabs him in the chest with the, the pool cues. It's obviously CG, but then how do you film that? Normally what you do is you um, you change the angle for the stab so yeah. the camera will be behind the person then then you cut to a reverse which is close up which is actually normally a makeup body double for the remember in saving so private you'll, Ryan you'll have when that Wade, when that uh, Giovanni Rubisi has those like holes in him and he's bleeding out like that's all practical it looks amazing yeah yeah it's re that's a really good scene he's calling out for his mom and shit oh man. That shit's um, crazy. Yeah, definitely. They like wipe the blood away and like more blood keeps like pouring out of it. It's, it's like, it's like, it's like Gucci was saying so many people like some of the fight scenes, the fact that, but take away that aspect, the fact you punch a guy in the face and sometimes it's just like the, 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 the impact is just so obvious. See, it's like hit some and it's like the impact is like, like that. It's, and it's so weird to see the punch be CG. Like I, I recommend watching the movie at double point. speed. That'll, uh, that'll make the blows <laughs> seem more visceral. So, um, those people in the chat, give us your ratings now. Uh, out of ten, uh, Gooch, what do you give it out of ten? Roadhouse. Oh God, a negative one. It was just awful. Um, okay, I couldn't stomach it. It was just from beginning to the end. Um, the the little kid. Uh, she. I don't know yeah. what the deal with her. Her bottom lip was way too big. She couldn't speak properly. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> The, the the acting was stiff. The everything was just awful. Uh, the writing, the direction, the CGI. Um, yeah, it was just awful all around. Uh, the the band playing like several like bands. They're in a roadhouse and they're playing like gospel music and everything. It was just like what like what is going on here? Like that was all really weird as well because you're going to yeah. cater to your audience, so you're not going to have that there anyway. What unless that's part of the plot? Unless it's like. You know, she's the daughter of a preacher and she's trying to bring some, you know, f religious message into the town, in which case, okay, make that part of the narrative. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, blue out of 10. 
I guess a two because like there are a couple. I Jake Jones had, had a couple scenes where he's a smart ass and it was fun. I do like the 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 angle where it's like, yeah, um, I'm gonna get really angry, and if if I get really angry, you're not gonna like it when I'm <laughs> angry, and I can get really 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 dangerous when I'm pissed off like that, like almost like that's great. That that's matching. Well, it's matching um Patrick Swayze's character because Patrick Swayze. Even in the first roadhouse, he's constantly holding back because you see what happens when he gets really, really fucking angry. And the point, the whole like joke with the whole like uh, ripping, out, ripping out guy's throat, uh, Dalton's ho- always holding back. And like, if you really get him angry, they kept that aspect the same. That's the only saving grace of the film I had was that Dalton is very dangerous when he wants to be. I, I literally thought he was going to get up and do the Hulk Hogan like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like the character aspect like Spider-Man. Spider-Man, people tend to forget in the comics and sometimes in the movies. We've seen this with uh, him fighting Willem Dafoe with uh, the last one that Peter Parker's biggest problem is he's constantly holding back. When Peter actually wants to go all out, he's extremely dangerous, but he doesn't want to hurt people. But he can overpower Green Goblin like that when you piss him off. And he showed that in, in that film. When he's actually wants to terrify you, Peter is way more powerful than he gives himself credit for. Uh, uh, yeah, Chris, I just uh, I just found this picture of you uh, <laughs> from from one of your uh, tantrum moments. Here it is. There we go. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we, you, you don't make don't make blue collar loser uh, angry. So uh, give me your angry out of ten, Blue. What, what no, you I, I still give like, it's a two out of ten. Two. I did like a couple a couple of scenes I did like, but yeah, it's because okay. at least Jake Jones, at least he got in a shape though. I mean that that him that shape that, wasn't easy. So what? So what? Lots of people get into shape for films. That, that if the film is shit, so that, fucking what? No, that's what I said too. Northern. <laughs> well, I haven't seen it, so I have to give it a zero off for now. But uh, I have a feeling it's going to be the very same rating. Um, I, I have I have seen it, and I'm giving it a zero out of ten. It was fucking crap. And uh, I'm sorry, man, but like I'm a filmmaker, and you know I normally like to compliment something, but can't think of anything. <laughs> from what you say, as get well, killed by really, an alligator. It, yeah, that was it, cool. It, yeah. Okay, from yeah, maybe I'll give it like it. one because the alligator it, thing. The alligator thing was cool. Two, two roided out psychopaths <laughs> rampaging over the Florida Keys out of ten. There you go. Okay. All right. One for right. each of the psychopaths. All right. Let's talk about some good stuff and some. So more so. bad stuff. <laughs> so so stuff. We've uh we've seen. I'm gonna recommend a couple of good I got some good things to recommend. So uh, Me too. Everybody's enjoying Shogun, I take it. We're gonna cover it tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, of course. Oh fuck yes. But, uh, yeah. episode six, pretty bloody good. If you want to see, you know, the, the the way you do a strong female narrative and keep it historical and in the historical context when women at, were actually repressed and were basically servants in Japanese society at that time. That's the way you do it. Watch Shogun episode six. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, the women have all the power in that show. Uh, very well done. Really like it. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that more uh, tomorrow. Has anybody been watching the Turning Point documentary series on Netflix? Uh, they did the oh, first damn. one, which was about 9-11 and everything leading up to that. And you now have Turning Point Cold War, uh, which is this show. And it's very good. Um, it goes right back to World War II. Each episode is about a specific thing to do with the relationship between the West and Russia. Um, so you've got one whole episode that covers like the Berlin Wall and how that came down, which was actually, I was quite surprised to learn, was by accident. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was a kind of misinformation that led to that. Um, but there's a whole episode about the Cuban Missile Crisis, and all the various things that, that went on in between and the, the rise to power of Putin uh, extremely, extremely well-made series. Um, if you like your history, and of course, it's very relevant now, and they tie it all into the current war in Ukraine, and the beginning of each episode covers a little bit of the war in Ukraine, and then they tie that all up at, in the, at the last episode. It's good. Yeah. I like to check it out because I am very fascinated by that area, especially during I, the old I think, you'd, yeah, series. you'd like it. It's yeah. got a, it's, it's a really good guests and you know, you've got people like Condoleezza Rice on there and um, 
ex-presidents, all kind of people being interviewed, but just really great footage and um, lots of interviews with people that were on the ground, like, you know, the guy that was running Checkpoint Charlie when the, the Berlin Wall came down and he was there and somebody heard on the news they're letting people through and he had 200 people there at the checkpoint. He's like, what do I do? Do I let them through? They said on the news, we can go through. And he's like calling his boss, so what do I do? His boss says, no, you can't let them through. 20 minutes later, there's 2,000 people there. What do I do? <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. It's it's a good uh, good show. So I give it a solid um, 8.5 out of 10. It's 8.2 on uh, IMDb uh, currently. No one else seen that, no? Nope. Okay, well, we can move on. Move on pretty quickly uh blue give us something you've watched uh once it was done i finished my video for Knox goes away with michael keaton it was I'll a right um now. it was um he directed it and i think it was a pretty it was a an okay film i think james martin is a very underrated actor i wish he would get more serious roles but michael keaton it's i still i like michael keaton as an actor and it's uh i think the trailer is it's one of the situations where don't watch this film think it's an action film. They show the action in the trailer. It's when you have a two hour film and you get a five minute action scene, don't expect that walking in. But it was um it was it was a decent watch. You know, I, I did I didn't hate it. What's the basic premise without well, uh, I, I, I give them credit, not even spoilers. The trailers, the first five minutes, five minutes in, hey, listen, um, you're a hit man. You uh okay, good news is there's no Alzheimer's, okay. But the problem is you have dementia. Okay, doc, can you cure me? Yeah, yeah, you have th uh, three weeks to live. You're gonna die. That's the first five minutes. Oh shit! <laughs> so, um, yeah. okay. He, so the, the premise is he's gonna die. Yeah. He's got three weeks to kind of make good on man with his dementia. wrongs. What Pretty much, yes. Wrong? And he, he and his his son his son shows up within five minutes later. His son shows up. Dad, yeah, I made a mistake. I killed somebody. Uh, can you help me? And so does he? Does he want to help his son? He's never been a good father, and um, you know. But and the reason his it, this is all within the trailer in the first opening 15 minutes, it's not a spoiler. His father or his son is a father of a 16 year old girl, which he's never met his granddaughter. Well, she's 16, her 32 year old boyfriend got her pregnant. Right. Um, and he goes, I, I confronted the guy, I wound up stabbing him in the neck repeatedly and killed him. I need yeah. your help because you're, you're a hitman. Oh, and, Pacino's in it, Pacino. yeah, Ooh. he's in it, Pacino's in it for a good eight minutes, maybe, yeah. Mm. But it's one of the things where you tell people, but you know, he probably filmed his scenes in about one day's of work, maybe. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably for, be nice for about a half a million paycheck one day. Yeah. You know. Um, I think the the ending is very good. I did like the ending, but it's it's a good. It's one of the films where it should have been on. I think hitting theaters was a big mistake for this kind of film. It feels like a very good Amazon Netflix kind of movie. For what it is, but I think I think it's worth a watch. I, I didn't hate it, but it was like you know I wouldn't I wouldn't tell any of you guys to go out and spend twenty bucks to see this. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, what would you? Has anyone else seen it? Anyone else seen it? Um, no. What would you give it out of ten? Blue. I give a good. I, I'd say a five. You know, just because I didn't I didn't hate it. But it's like everybody's just fine. Like like nobody has a breakout performance. It's just fine. That's all it is. It's not a bad film, but I wouldn't see myself watching it again anytime soon. It, it's it's a one time watch. No. Okay, thank you. And Keith is reminding me the time changes in England this Sunday. Right, oh. yeah. So actually we we've, we've got a time change. Uh good to thank you for reminding me, uh, Keith. I so, do like the fact Michael Keaton between this, the flash now, Beetlejuice coming out. I'm glad Michael Keaton, he's like 72 years old. The guy he, I swear he aged five minutes in the past 30 years. Hmm. Okay, so he, he looks very old. Is what you're saying? <laughs> he seems to be do He seems to be uh, getting bigger than he was back in the. Uh, he's he has it's like this so weird like Michael Keaton resurgence, but he looks fantastic for his age. You know, he's not like some pathetic old man. He looks he looks great. Like even in the Flash, didn't like the Flash, but everyone would agree that probably the best part of the Flash was his scenes. His scenes in the Flash were really good. Yeah, he was the only good thing in that film. Hmm. <laughs> Just don't watch the film. Just watch the Michael Keaton scenes on YouTube. That's all you need. I'm fine with that. I'm I'm <laughs> quite happy not to watch the Flash or the Michael Keaton scenes in the Flash. <laughs> um, okay, so Knox goes away. I I mean, I quite like the sound of it. The way you set it up, I thought it sounded all right. Um, yeah. But, okay, Stepenzo, what do you what do you got to recommend? 
Uh, I watched, uh, we talked about it briefly yesterday. I watched uh, The Peasants. Oh, the yes. The one with the um, Russian people go go farming. Yes. Right. It's Polish people uh, farming yep. in the early 21st, 20th century uh, or 19th century. And uh, they, uh, yeah, the whole thing is uh, rotoscoped on oil paintings. <laughs> Just like uh, Loving Vincent. If you guys saw Loving Vincent, it's the same people who made that movie. Some of the most insane looking rotoscoping I've ever seen. And yeah, the story is pretty cool. It's a very simple, you know, old timey story about, um, you know, a young woman. She's beautiful, a uh, young uh, maiden. She's uh, asked to uh, wed the richest farmer in the village who's an old elderly man who's a widow. And she kind of has this romance with his son and who is married and has children. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was actually pretty good. It has a kind of a kind of a crazy ending. But yeah, definitely. Um, if you're just into insane animation, just just watch the trailer and just like, man, it's really, really mind boggling. But yeah, if you're into some kind of good old fashioned, uh, you know, smaller story that's got uh, uh, some pretty good uh, uh, metaphors to it. Uh, yeah, check it out. It was good. Um, the life story of Vex Electronica, the peasants now available. Uh, what do you, where, where oh, can people yeah. see it? Um, well, I don't even know. I watched it somewhere. Yeah. I can't really tell you. Uh, yeah. let's see. The Peasants is available on um, some streaming service, probably. Yeah, uh, okay. you can cool. buy it. You can buy it on cool. Amazon and Google and stuff. It's out there. YouTube. I, I have to admit it. It's you know, it's kind of alluring, isn't it? This whole painting look. Oh, the one... yeah. The thing is, I loved Loving Vincent, and I was excited about Loving Vincent because I liked, I like all those Richard Linklater rotoscope movies. I like the early. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Basky, Baxi movies. Oh, yeah, the Lord yeah. of the Rings I, and uh, yeah, American Pop is one of my favorites of all time. So when I heard about Loving Vincent, it was like I had to wait for like a year for it to come out. I saw the trailer for it. And I was like, wow, that looks insane. This movie just kind of dropped on the internet. It turns out it came out last year at some point. I never even heard of it. I was like, what the hell? As a big animation buff, I was kind of like, kind of blown away. This kind of slipped under the radar. Uh, but yeah. Um, perhaps it was on, uh, it wasn't nominated for best animated film or foreign film or anything. So I probably would have heard about it then, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Really mind blowing animation. Um, really well done. Trippy. If you, guys like, ever, if you guys have ever taken like heroic doses of psilocybin mushrooms, <laughs> this is exactly what it looks like. I didn't know Go Gooch had a cameo. There it is. Um, so what would you give it out of 10? Uh, a solid seven. Uh, and the animation knocks it up to a uh, uh, eight visually. I mean, dude, it's it's wild, and it's like you said, like uh, like we were talking about, like is it like computer animated, like assisted? And if you watch the behind the scenes footage, it seems like it's all real painting, oil paintings on canvas. Yeah, right, which is like crazy. Uh, Nick says Russian, Polish. What's the difference? Well, if you ask Putin, none. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, great More okay well, that's, uh, that's a recommendation uh for the peasants now we're going to talk about a film that might be a bit more uh divisive it's time to go full <laughs> i recognize that theme yeah so uh let's get into the go t-shirt got this this, this brand new t-shirt yeah wow does that mean you're gonna wear it for a month straight without washing it yes yeah like All last right. like, like with the june one so I, Go watched, I watched it. Frozen Shut Empire. Up. I just did a stream last night about the original Ghostbusters. While we were doing that stream, I kind of learned that Walter Peck is now the mayor of New York City, yeah. which is kind of a nice little tie-in to the original. A uh, whole the, lot of the, the, um, a whole lot of fan service in this one. Yeah, the guy who's the uh, head of the hotel, uh, I think, has got a cameo. I think that the head librarian guy's got a cameo. In for, so there's a few sort of member berry Easter eggs and things, but um, people seem pretty divided on the movie. Um, Blue's seen it. Stepenzo, you've seen it, right? Yep. Gooch, you've seen it? No. Uh, Northern, have you seen it? No, not a chance. Uh, I'll try and see if I can uh, watch it this week if I can. Okay, so Blue, uh, without having too many spoilers, give us the basic plot outline and uh, um, your, your thoughts well the basic plot is that a couple years have passed by since afterlife and i did say that afterlife felt like it was never going to be ghostbusters 3 but more like an homage to ghostbusters 2 
this in terms of canon could be considered Ghostbusters three in the sense that it was a smart decision to go back to New York. And I did yeah. feel like I did like afterlife for what it was, but let's be honest, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie, um, Ernie Hudson and, and Bill Murray were just glorified cameos. This one, Dan Aykroyd, I would say time with uh, Mackenzie uh, pl plays Phoebe. Dan Aykroyd's got a lot of airtime in this film and also er Ernie Hudson does as well. I did like the aspect when some people wouldn't like it, but we're so used to Marvel and DC and Disney. And at this point, just, it seems like certain, certain franchises where they're making the OG characters old and pathetic. Yes. You know, Winston and Ray are not the Ghostbusters anymore, but they're not useless. They're there for knowledge and they, they do help out the younger Ghostbusters. I did like the fact that the older Ghostbusters, they weren't disrespecting the, the OG. I did like that aspect of it. And we have a new villain, you know, because Afterlife, Afterlife's biggest problem is they were just basically reusing Gozer from Ghostbusters 1. They did add a new villain to the Ghostbusters franchise. They also expanded on the lore. I do like the fact that it's 2024. We're using drones. We have smartphones. We have new gadgets. And Winston did buy the, um, he did buy the firehouse. And the question is, back in 1980s, and it's a, it's a running joke, you guys, for the past 45 some odd years, have been putting ghosts into this big vault. Well, what happens eventually? The vault's going to run out of space. What happens then? You know, and they, they weren't thinking about that back in 1985. Right. That's interesting. Uh, it's depends, though. Give us your I eyes. feel like it was uh, one of those movies that was probably edited heavily in post because there's like huge chunks of like, you know, Paul Rudd never wears the red jacket. Like they, they have like the scene where all the characters are wearing like the red insulated winter jackets, which I thought were a cool costume change. Nope. There was wearing the brown overalls throughout the whole movie. So I feel like there's probably a whole different movie on the editing room floor. Uh, the other thing is like, yeah, um, heavily focusing on the teenage girl again. She's having some kind of a gay angst uh, relationship with a ghost girl. That seems to be the central uh, plot. And then everyone that's talking else, like Paul Rudd, whenever we see a scene with him and his new wife, they're talking about the girl. And, and, and then Wolfen, Wolfhard, whatever his name is, Wolfbane, yeah. Stranger Things kid. He's kind of like left on the sidelines to deal with Slimer. Yeah, um, I feel like his character was kind of just like under underutilized and uh, I mean, it's cool. I think, having... the actor is, I think the actor is at the moment. Either he doesn't seem to be uh, doing anything um, that spectacular. Since, well, give since him time. He's, he's, he's I, I, yeah, the question is, what was worse? Uh, you know, Ghostbusters compared to the original or Roadhouse compared to the original? I don't know, man. Um, they're both bad for different reasons. I, I liked how this one tried to play up the horror aspect a bit, but it kind of falls short and also the comedy yeah. takes a takes us backseat for some reason because of that um and also did they, yeah did they pay homage to um they paid Lamy. homage to everything so what are we gonna say yeah there's so well, many homages I, I, so how, did they, how did they pay homage to uh harold ramis um well obviously uh they're they're the spangler family so there are lots of yeah. uh like uh eon spangler he designed the contraption that's like central plot point for everything and um uh he doesn't like make a gratuitous like cgi cameo or anything in the movie which is uh right thank uh, good but um yeah i mean obviously he is not forgotten but uh yeah because yeah. because they, they wound up showing footage on the news from uh ghostbusters 2 with the statue of liberty walking <laughs> yeah they so, do acknowledge so, that happened <laughs> yeah they do acknowledge it and it's it. And some people, I would say that you know, people get upset. Like, well, this is New York City, right? How could people forget that the the Stay Puft, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and the Statue of Liberty were walking eighties? Have you been to New York City? People have very short attention spans and memories. I could see in twenty twenty four, people would not remember the Ghostbusters from the eighties. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in that universe, uh, come on. Look, I told you, Lance. Lance, we just watched Masters of the Air. We. In 2024, we have Holocaust deniers. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give it time. In my, in my lifetime, I I could tell you right now. I watch my grandkids say, "Hey, oh, you know, Grandpa Chris, on uh, 9/11, did, did that really happen? Or was that CGI? Or, that was that really fake?" Uh, yeah, I'm, right. I'm telling you, I'm, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Well, there'll be people saying that one day for sure. Okay, so uh, what would you guys uh, give Frozen Empire out of ten? Maybe. And do you think if you watched it in Hindi, it would improve? Because there's a Hindi version. Of um, it. here I I would probably have to give it a higher rating than Broadhouse because it was less offensive. Yeah. Um, I'd probably give it like a four out of ten, yeah. a three maybe. Some of, some of the jokes did land. 
I mean, and Bill Murray's got a, he has more time. Bill Murray's, Bill Murray scenes were funny. I gotta admit. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so, uh, anyone else got anything to add or rating wise? Yeah. No, it definitely, it, I give it five out of 10. The problem was, was it's like the biggest issue is they have too many characters and they have five different plot lines at one point. That's the issue. It's like, don't have five different plot lines have one concise storyline. You have too many characters going in five different directions. That's the biggest problem. Instead of having just one bad guy, at some some points, like Enzo said, the new villain is pretty scary, but you're never scared of the villain. The first film, Lance, you've watched that, Gooch, everybody. The first film is pretty, pretty goddamn scary. And yeah, um, the, the, uh, villain, the villain, you're never scared by the villain. He's just there, but he's only one aspect of a storyline. There's too much blow. Okay. Well, maybe we can get a nine-hour Napoleon cut of it uh, down the road. Okay, so Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. You probably won't love it, but, hey, it's out now uh, if you want to see it. Uh, so, uh, Stepenzo, what's this uh, stuff you got here? Oh, it's blue collar when he's angry. You don't want to see him when he's angry. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. It does look yeah, like him. I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, it's him. Uh, that, yeah. It's blue collar hulked out. It is. Needs to be by green milk for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Shit. Oh, I can do uh, that. You don't drink Sorry, beer. That's right. We can get green uh, milk in here. All right. Okay. Uh, Northern, what have you been watching this week? Anything new that you want to uh, watch? Mostly just old movies. Uh, the most, the most time I get to watch movies. Yeah. Give us an old Night Nighthawks. Nighthawks for the first time. Oh, my God. With Rutger yeah. Hauer and Stallone. Yeah. That's a great film. I know. I've great caught idea. a few times when it came on RTV4, but never all the way through. Last Saturday, finally all the way through. And yeah, let's, really let's, fucking let's underrated. Get in, let's get into it. It's a, it's a good movie. Most people haven't seen it. Um, basic plot is that a kind of, I wouldn't call him a state-of-the-art criminal, but a kind of high-level criminal guy is terrorizing New York City uh, in the form of uh, Rutger Hauer. Um, it's one of the few films that Persis Combata did, aside from Star Trek, the new motion picture. Uh, Lindsay Wagner, the Barnick woman, is in it. Billy D. Williams, Landau Carissian himself, and uh, Nigel Davenport, who people might remember from young Sherlock Holmes as the nutty professor guy. Uh, it's a good film. It's got great scenes, Great action. So you, you saw it for the first time. This is the poster, poster most people will remember mm -hmm. on the VHS. Yeah. Uh, I saw it on TV, and then I rented it. Um, and I think when I rented it, I realized uh, that some of the violence had been cut. Um, she's great in it as well. Persis is, is great in this film. Um, yeah, so a good find for you then, Northern, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it is very underrated. On um, I think this was there uh, before Stallone was uh, regarded as an action star because there was a couple of scenes where his uh, delivery was a bit monotone. But apart from that, he really does play this fucking unhinged cop pretty well. Especially Billy D. Williams. Him and Billy yeah. D. Williams is a very underrated pairing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 were they had good chemistry together in this film. Because the uh, the finale's on the cable car, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, very intense going, scene. Goes... Uh, Rutger Ruck is just fucking capping in some fox. He does not give a shit. This guy is ruthless. He is a total bastard in this. Yeah, yeah, he's got a load of people hostage. I've actually been on this cable car um, that goes over to Manhattan from um, I think is it Brooklyn side. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't remember now, yeah. but. Um, one yeah. thing though was this shot in the nineteen seventies because even though it was made uh, released nineteen eighty one eighty two it's it still looks very nineteen seventies. It was uh, shot in seventy nine, I think. Yeah, a lot of films seem to have had that uh, problem. Like uh, Scanners was released in eighty one, but that was uh, shot in seventy nine as well. Had reshoots in eighty. Yeah. Um, yeah, good film. What would you give it out of ten? I give it an eight out of ten. It's not the greatest film ever though but it's got uh some good characters it's very gritty it's very violent it doesn't uh hold your hand it's uh yeah it it's it's a good little thriller with some solid performances quick quick funny story about a mac 10 machine gun so i had done this um this movie shoot thing we this promo thing we did in the in the 90s and then 
I was going over to um, the States for a holiday, right? And I wanted a big bag because I wanted to buy a couple of skateboards and bring them back because they were so much cheaper in America. So I went up into the loft. This loft, this bag was full of props, emptied it out of the props. I was in a bit of a rush. My dad was waiting to take me to the airport. I chucked all my clothes in it and I, I went rushing to the airport, went through security, all the rest of it. When I got into my hotel, I unpacked the bag and there was a Mac 10 machine gun in it. I shit you not. Because it, was, it wasn't a real one. It was a replica, but it was like one of the props that was in the bag. It's such a small gun. It kind of got caught under a fold. And I was in such a rush, I didn't see it. I went through the airport, got on the plane, everything with that. That was in 1991. So this is pre-9-11. But, I mean, can you imagine if they pulled it out and said, why have you got this? Um, they never would have believed me. <laughs> they never would have believed me if I told Jesus. them. Jesus. And I found it in the hotel and I smashed it up and put it in the bin. I was so horrified that I'd brought it with me. And I, th I thought, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, that's, so there you go. That, was a, that would have been very hilarious. That would have been a, another Lance story. Joe Spinelli. Um, yeah, this guy has been in loads yeah. him. Fucking Godfather. Rocky as well. Rocky yeah. is a fucking lawn shark, isn't he? Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah. The Barnet yeah. Woman. Look, Catherine Mary Stewart. Look how young she is. Oh, oh. man. From Last Starfighter. I wow. thought she looked familiar. But God, what? she's still a stunning woman, even today. I know. Man. Oh, she looks amazing now, yeah. She does look amazing. Rutger Howard does do the, the psychotic loony really well in this. Um, well, the Hitcher, he was really good, too. Yeah. So, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's a good uh, it's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Track it down. Uh, yeah, I'd probably give it about an 8 out of 10. I've not seen it in a while, but I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, fab stuff. Gooch, what have you been watching? Uh, I watched a, a Korean um, series on Netflix called Chicken Nugget. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's I fantastic. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 um, the humor in it is really well done. Um, I, I, the story is, is about this, um, employee of this uh company that's like a three-man operation they sell um me mechanical stuff they don't even need to elaborate on it and um there was a box that was delivered and he just brings it in to the shop and the owner's like where's that from and he goes i have i thought you, you ordered it and he goes i didn't order that and they we gotta send this back so they they were about to send it back but the daughter uh, of the owner shows up and the one employee has a crush a massive crush on the daughter and <coughs> um they had they had chicken nuggets there and so anyway she goes inside the box to see what it's all about and she gets turned into a chicken nugget and so the father and the employee are trying to figure out how to bring her back <laughs> Uh, it's 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 hilarious. It's funny. Um, hang on, hang really on. Is the scene. chicken nugget okay. talking shit, or is it no, like a, to, no, to, no, no, no? How do they no, how do they know she is actually the chicken nugget? And how does she not get eaten? You have to watch it, but like the, she has three sesame seeds like placed in a certain area, and then they and then they find this lady <laughs> here. It's it's so it's so hilarious. It's you have to watch it. You're gonna really enjoy it. It's so right. over the top. And it's uh, uh, based I, on a webtoon, uh, Korean webtoon, and it's just fantastic. I was la I was le legit laughing out loud. Like it just it made me laugh. It was just so silly that you just you're just enjoying it. Like you're just you're in now, for the ride. Now, Blue, if you want to dress up for the next stream, dude, I direct you to this photo and these threads. <laughs> sure. I'll do it. I, I I put that out there as a joke. Don't take it too literally. But that Gooch I'll, I'll can do it. In this. Look at this. This is like some sort of Super Mario Brothers <laughs> kind of weird, weird uh, abortion. What's happening? <laughs> well, Vex and I have been watching the series, and we just love it. It's it's fantastic. It's uh they, they there's a there's a guy that um he is a, the creator of this um of this uh i forget the name of it uh this orb kind of looking piece that he uses to like it's almost like the fly where he's transporting back and forth like the two pods cool. um yeah and it, it's and so he needs that he, he breaks into the 
into the warehouse to get the the box back uh, the, or the booth back and they and they they are going and trying to find out where where it went and the, the one guy in yellow i forget his name but he he meets up with his ex-girlfriend and that's a, that's a take right there and they, there's so many takes in it you're you're just literally you're you're along for a ride you're just laughing and it's really well done um yeah those two boosts in the back have uh, you guys nice. tried Korean uh, chicken nuggets or K- Korean fried chicken? It's amazing. Yeah, I've yeah. had it. It's pretty good, but it didn't have three sesame seeds in a key place. So I'm... I'll, put a, I'll put a link yeah. to, the rest, to an awesome recipe in the in the comments. Oh, well, <laughs> I, you know what? I've got to watch this. There she is. Um, turned into a chicken nugget. Is it just one season? So far, yeah. yeah. It's based on a webtoon out of Korea. So I mean, uh, I don't know how many, how many uh, chapters a web, they have. A web, a web tune. Yeah, web tune. Uh, the Sorry, when you the, said the, season, did you mean season or seasoning? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they do talk about that. They keep, like they talk about don't let her dry out, and they have to like put <laughs> they, they put her with um <laughs> what is it the, the 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 oil on her to keep her moist and it's it's nice. it's so fun. Oh yeah, it, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's definitely out there, man. Uh, all right, chicken nugget. Uh, gonna have to. Uh, are you Gooch, anything else you want to recommend? Um, I I'm watching season two of Physical 100 as well. It's a great another. I just Korean I just I just saw like the first two minutes of that, and it, you've got that whole bit where everybody's taking off their shirts. Yeah. To to to, to get in their costumes, and it's like. Everyone's looking around to see who's got the most abs. Yeah, um, it's kind of. I mean, yeah. There's well, it's, there's only a matter of time before there's going to be a Western version of this, right? Yeah, yeah. It takes it takes people from all sorts of uh, professions. So you could be a sumo wrestler. You could be. Um, you could be uh, what is an arborist? You Big could fan be a YouTuber. mailman. Yeah, you, yeah, YouTuber, all that kind of stuff, and but you have to be physically fit, and um, so not a YouTuber <laughs> unless you're an yeah, exercise. YouTuber. Yeah, there is there is YouTubers that are on there, and so like uh, I'm um, sure there are, and they do all these uh, competitions, but you have to have a, a flurry of like abilities. Like you can't just be super strong or super fast. You have to have all of them. Like you have to be intelligent. You have to be able to work well with uh, with others. You gotta. What's the what's the betting that somebody weed in that pool during that during this scene? Oh, I, de- I definitely would. Photo. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would have. <laughs> Did you think they had that dye in the pool? You know, it, it it like creates the color around you when you've had a wee. Uh, so not that that happened to me, but what's this kind of like strange masked mugger guy standing in the background? Is this a bit like um? The squid game thing you know they do these physical things but then also these maskless guys kind of pop out and decapitate them and shit or <laughs> no it's just the referee like he just lets them know if they're doing something illegal or if someone gets hurt like this is the first challenge like you, the first 50 people will get eliminated right away like right. it's yeah it, it's really well done that's season one right there it's i'm into season two right now and it's 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 it's, it's enjoyable like this at this one right here is to see who can hang on the longest and and then you get ranked uh, one to one hundred, and then in my, you uh, in my in my um high street up the road, they've got this thing called beat the bar at the minute. And if you can hold on to the bar before the clock, uh, until the clock counts down, you you um get I don't know you win like I don't know how much money it is. You, you got to pay to do it, and you maybe you win like thirty quid or maybe a hundred pounds. I don't know. I'm sure it must be fixed got to be rigged somehow maybe they grease the pole or something so people can't (laughs) hang on what was the longest someone hung on on this i think it was like i want to say like it was a quite a while um they had like i think three to six people hanging on for close to an hour like they they were hanging on there for quite a while god Uh there's a few american contestants in this isn't there it's it's no they're all they're all korean Oh, they're um, all. I, I yeah. thought a couple of the black guys like looked like American Marines, maybe or no. I but they might. Uh, I think they. Well, they they're definitely Korean. They live in Korea. Uh, a lot of them are um, either playing rugby or they play um, some sport in like baseball or whatever in Korea. 
Um, so I remember this scene. This was in Stripes with uh, Bill Murray and uh, Harold Ramis. Yeah, yeah. Slightly different context, context, but uh, mud, mud what's wrestling. going on here? This is uh, mm. is, is, this, is this still the show or is this afterwards? <laughs> no, that's still the first uh, first competition. Ah, I've, shown guys, I've shown you guys Turkish oil oil wrestling, right? You've seen that yeah. before, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is this is going to be a massive hit with the LGBT community for sure. Uh, it just Why is. This is going to be a huge, huge hit. Just ask Toxic Man; he'll know. Oh. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah, physical 100. I have to say, I sort of like started watching the first five minutes. I thought this is going to just be one of those shows that's complete nonsense yet totally captivating. I better turn mm -hmm. it off. So I did. I switched it off quickly before I got drawn in. Uh, Stepenzo, what else you seen? I watched that stupid immaculate movie with uh, Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, uh, it's pretty that stupid and offensive. Fun. Uh, bloody, and uh, she does kind of show boobies a little bit. So if you're into that, but yeah, I want to watch that, and and I saw that, and I also want to watch the dumb um, Angel Studios nun movie that just came out as well, which I know is nothing <laughs> like Immaculate, but but uh, yeah, you've got a, an American girl going to Italy to be a nun, and she gets uh, impregnated mysteriously, and it turns out there's some conspiracy involving the Catholic Church, and uh, I don't know some kind of baby being born and maybe smashed with a rock. I don't know. It was fucked up. Uh, <laughs> but uh, were, were you paying well, attention or were you just looking at Sydney Sweeney and not really? No, no. I mean, I was paying attention, but it was just a lot of, uh, you know, stuff I've seen before in a dozen other horror movies. Um, you know, I don't know. Nothing, nothing to write home about. Although, yeah, there's like. Ooh, that's um, an inventive top, isn't it? With the, the hands coming around to hold the flowers there. Is it yeah, me I mean, or Lance? But like, uh, and Chris, uh, uh, well, you, all you guys would know this. Like, does she remind you of a young Sharon Stone? Yeah, I, actually, hmm. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, I, I never thought that, but, but with well, bigger boobs, yeah, they, her, her yeah. chest is definitely bigger. <laughs> Hopefully, she's not as big a pain in the ass as uh, Sharon Stone was reported to be. I like about her is because she's embracing it, like, she, she knows seems to be pretty based because it's like she, she knows what she has, she knows what guys want, and, and okay cool <laughs> we were talking about yesterday how like the glad awards were like can she not be showing her huge her her pervasive body everywhere it's offensive to us ugly people what's the yeah. sorry what's the what's the glad awards is that one where everyone gets a trophy or, or g l a a d gay lesbian alliance oh, association okay. or something or other i don't know oh, oh lesbians that. complaining i don't think they would no, why exactly. Are they, like, why are they offended that she's? You're yes, only allowed to be they complain about you're everything. Only allowed to be, yeah, you're only allowed to show skin and curves if you're fat and ugly. Yeah, yeah. Well, like okay. body positivity it's, it's, only allowed is for is only allowed yeah. for the freaks. Right. Yeah, some some yeah. people are offended. Like, like you can't be 475 pounds and be a a, uh, a sexual model. We don't like it when <laughs> these women are making men think things. You know, Tim. We did not see the casting announcement for. Happy Gilmore too. Uh, let me know if you want to come on and uh, tell us about it, buddy. I've invited well, you on Gilmore before. You're welcome to come on. Happening. I do like the fact that Christopher, um, I can't his name. Uh, yeah, did you see that tweet with Christopher Mc McDonald? Or yeah, he's like he's he like, a picture of Adam Sandler in this yes, fucking gory clothes. I thought it's like he's I'm like, not losing to this fucking oh, guy. Oh, it's for again. Netflix. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that Christopher McDonald still he's still in, in, in on to the joke. Like, yeah, that's great. It I'm was a great there. post Christopher McDonald posted, or no, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, Christopher McDonald. Well, McDonald. It, it, it was like a it, shooter, shooter McGavin. McGavin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He sent a picture of uh, Adam Sandler in his ridiculous clothes. He's like, "Do I seriously <laughs> I lose against this guy? There's it. no way." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't believe it's, it. Yeah, dude. you're right though. This uh, Chris Mc McDonald must have a really good fucking sense of humor to uh, oh, be doing definitely. this. Yeah. If yeah. I was Bruce famous like Adam Sandler, I would dress like him. Bruce Campbell's in it. Oh wow. Really? Hang on, oh, so I Bruce, it out. Bruce I Campbell's watch it out. in the new new Happy Gilmore. Didn't yeah. yeah, I'm yeah, hearing that he's that barely now. written it. It's not. It's just being written right now. What? I don't know. Okay, that's fine right. with me. Uh, it depends. Oh, you got anything else you want to recommend that you're seeing? Um, well, everybody disappeared off camera. How come me and Blue? Nothing, the only because uh, I, I took my shirt off for a second, best. but I put oh, it back on. Oh, you would do. You were going the physical 100. Okay. Um, I think it's no. I, um. Uh, nothing else that we haven't talked about already. Um, the stupid. Well, we watched X Men '97, which is two episodes in, so it's like too little to mm. talk about, too much. And we talked yeah. about it. And I'm confused. Is that a new TV show? 
Such, yes. Yeah, cartoon uh, continuation of the animated X Men show. Not okay. bad. First episode was great. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I've got a couple of other things I want to recommend, but uh, <laughs> before we get on to them, let's talk about a, a, a show that I'm a kind of a bit sort of on the fence about. Uh, yeah. And I know some people have seen a couple of apps. So, Three Body Problem arrived on our yeah. shores. Uh, the Game of Thrones guys are. Oh, boy. Uh, Spearheading. Now, I'm going to say, put my cards on the table and say straight off the bat, kind of pissed off when I was watching this because my Diamonds in the Sky book series is now available on Amazon uh, sci fi <laughs> uh, show. I wrote it especially to be the whole reason I wrote that novel was because I thought they'll never give me the money to um, make this as a TV show. Hang on, I'm just going to put Gooch on my head. It's the first time I've ever said that. Um, yeah. and, um, <laughs> Not the last, though. No, no, indeed. Um, but yeah, and uh, you know, so I wrote the TV show because I thought they're never gonna. And and it's all about first contact. It's all about alien ships arriving on the Earth. This is kind of in my in my book series. The ships arrive, um, but you don't know why they're here. They don't communicate with anybody. Uh, it's not like Arrival. Before anyone says, is it like Arrival? No, is the answer. Because in Arrival, you have aliens and they communicate. There's no aliens. People can't get in the ships. No one comes out. So, um, so th th there are some similarities. Uh, three body problem is based on a book series. There are three books. It's a Chinese book, um, and there is actually a Chinese version of this show uh, that you can see that is actually longer. Um, that covers the first book. I think it's about twelve episodes. Um, sticks to the book pretty accurately. I don't know why they just didn't release that on Netflix. Maybe they thought we couldn't handle it. Uh, you know, I think people are used to reading subtitles or can handle dubbing, but now we've got this kind of more universal version that's got some more Western characters. Uh, but basically the premise is um, there's two timelines. One is in the past. One is in the present. In the past, a woman who... Um, <clears throat> is part of the uh, what you would call the China Republic or whatever it was called back back then. Uh, she is assigned to this uh, satellite listening radio antenna, and she picks up a message because they've been trying to contact aliens. They got a burst from a system far, far away, and um, one of the messages that replies to their message says, "Don't reply to this message. I'm a pacifist on my planet." Um, if they know you're there, they'll come for you, or words to that effect. Uh, this is not a big spoiler. Most of this is in the first episode. And um, she decides to reply uh, because she thinks the human race is fucked anyway, and it would be good if aliens came and taught us a lesson. And then the rest of the show is all kind of leading up to their arrival in the two timelines. Um, yet yeah, this isn't like arrival, and I'd agree with your comment drew i'm a bit on the fence about it as well there's some stuff about it that's really good mainly the performances the visual effects are nice um but there's also lots of scenes that go on and on that don't really serve any purpose it's 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 longer than it needs to be um and it, it's not complete and we don't know if there's going to be a second season and it's left on a cliffhanger so ultimately if we if we don't get <laughs> Yeah, so if we're ultimately, if we don't get season two, it's one of those shows that's pointless watching it. It doesn't work as a standalone season. It sets up I, everything. I watched but, the first two episodes, and yeah, yeah I it's got the vague idea that it just seems it's the same mystery box garbage that I felt like even if I did power through the whole eight hours of the show, it still wouldn't answer any questions. I mean, I, I just I'm so tired of the storytelling where it's like we are not privy to the inner workings of the story like us the audience we, we're not allowed to know what's actually happening you better yeah. tell us something please <laughs> like please tell us something um i also don't like how um it's very dei show uh, every woman every bipoc woman is running the show and every white man is a retarded loser and every black man is an effeminate nerd why is that a thing where they have to make every black dude 
wearing glasses and a little sweater and a, and a tie. And they always have to be a little nerdy guy. <laughs> I like computers. You never see like black dudes with balls anymore. Black macho guys. God damn it. They kind of like drain the testosterone out of everything. Um, but yeah, yeah, other than that, just like a lot of, uh, yeah, like Chinese woman in 1960s, uh, communist China, like running the show. She's the best at everything. Uh, that's what I talk about for the first two episodes. Anyway, I don't know how it goes from there, but yeah, like I said, I just knew like it was going to, uh, yeah, just like a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, keep you watching with this qu- constant question mark over your head. I don't give a shit about that stuff anymore. I, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I don't, it's not my job to solve the puzzle of your stupid story. Okay. Like you, you tell me the story and if it's good, if it's entertaining, I keep talking about that damn story about the kids sharing the shoes, right? Children of heaven. I keep talking mm-hmm. about it. It was good. Yeah. Damn it. It was a simple story. There's no damn mystery box of suspense of what's going to come. It's just a, it's just a simple story. Um, and yeah, uh, read the story, uh, read the book. Uh, sure. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm sure it's a cool, interesting concept from what I heard. When people were talking about making this a show, a lot of things, it seemed like a lot of this would be hard to film or um, translate to film because it's like a lot of like wild sci fi out there ideas, you know, so like nanotechnology and uh, virtual simulations and shit like that. I don't know. Mm. Well, um, the uh, yeah. Drew is Drew is saying the books are genuinely awesome. And listen, man. That's cool. that's that's fair enough, and um, the book may well work. Don't forget, books work very differently in terms of narrative. Yeah, set up story like they also let you visualize a lot of things in your head. Um, but you can't um criticize us for we're purely reviewing this as a TV show. If you're gonna make a TV show, uh, from a book, um, and we're gonna criticize it, the defense can't be read the fucking book then. Well, it has, no, I mean, to, it has to work as a TV show. Yeah, maybe we might want to go and read the book as well. But, um, you know. Well, like, I'm glad I did watch the whole eight hour show because, according to Lance, it just ends on a massive cliffhanger and makes you, you know, scratch your head wondering what's coming. And it's just like, there, there, there are some really You're effective right. sequences in it, in, including a, a scene where a ship gets squashed like a beer can and a lot of people get dissected. Yeah. And, that's extremely well done and it's actually mm. genuinely quite horrifying. Yeah. Um, and there, the dude kiss was on our show last night. He was talking raving about the book and saying like, he didn't realize there was a show based on the book out. You know, he was like, what, how are they going to do that? I don't know. It sounds trippy, but he was trying to explain it to me what, what it was about. And it's just like, okay, well, it sounds interesting. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, like I say, it's, it's, I'm not. This is not a, a non-recommendation. I think some people will really like it. Um, I, I get the sense that it's quite faithful. It, it does have a lot of detail. You've got various scenes set in a computer game. This is a shot from that where people have to solve puzzles, which is about the communication. This, by the way, is all filmed in the UK. Wow. Um, several well, friends. My, several friends of mine were in some of these scenes. That is actually the same forest set where the battle of gladiator was filmed just covered with snow from a snow machine and that's the same hill from the ridley scott robin hood uh what, movie what's really yeah. interesting about the show is this is one of the few times i'm seeing netflix like promote something they rarely do that usually it's like they let the show go out and then it's spread by memes and word of mouth and they kind of let us do all their advertising for them for free but this is one of the few times where i'm seeing like ads I'm seeing like <laughs> plugs everywhere and I'm like, okay, seems interesting, but why are you promoting this when you've got probably like a bunch of other stuff on there? Uh, promote the Car- <laughs> chicken nugget show, you know, promote that. Yeah. Oh. Has anyone seen a late night with the devil yet? I want to. Is it even out yet? It. Yeah. I heard about it. I want to. Okay. Time. And Gord's talking about, about it. Place. The actor yeah, David Dalmatian is amazing. That's a, He's an amazing actor. Hmm. Yeah, is he the one who's, uh, who plays Polka Dot Guy in uh, Suicide Squad? Yeah. Well, is that David the Small really Show? Is his name the Small Show? I think it's. What's I'm wrong? He plays Piter in um, in June, uh, the Baron's assistant. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that guy has rage. He really does. Yeah. The guy seems to. 
just disappear into his fucking roles. But I like him yeah. best yeah. when he is crazy, though. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do a stream on um my favorite character actors at the minute. Uh, I did a blog on it once, and um yeah, I would definitely put him near the top of the list of people currently. I think he's. I think he's fat. Dude, I forgot. Um, yeah. I did watch something else. Gord uh, King saw it. Thought it was really good. Cool. Um, uh, well, hold that thoughts depends. I will. I will. We'll, we'll, I will. We'll, I will. We'll, come, we'll come to it. Just show people. So, I mean, there are some great visuals in this. They've spent a lot of money on it. This is a very cool scene where they try and solve a mass problem by using this guy's army as a sort of massive computer, which um, is is quite bizarre, but kind of cool. Um, I'm I'm coming to the conclusion that John Bradley basically can only play the character he played on Game of Thrones because I told you this is exactly who he'd yeah. play. Yeah. <laughs> with that guy. That's it. Yeah, I mean and he seems like a lovely but the fact guy. that it's the same guys who made Game of Thrones, it means that like they are yeah. also typecasting him again. It's mm-hmm. so strange. Yeah. Um and in- yeah, I'm sorry, those guys have earned no no fit good favor in my opinion. So I mean no. They have to no. earn my my trust. Um yeah so uh, I I don't know what to give this out of 10 it's a real um it's a real hard one to rate because it feels very incomplete like you can watch season 1 of Fargo and you don't have to see the rest and 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 it's a self-contained show right. um you know you can watch a season of Deep Space 9 there might be some cliffhangers but it's still a it, it's still something that's satisfying on its own this feels like i've just read half a book um and i want to know the rest you know so um yeah it's uh but just in terms of visuals acting is mostly good um i think the script drags a bit but yeah i'll probably give it um six to seven out of ten uh, Drew is saying the Chinese version is better, and I'm I'm sure it probably is. I'd like to see the Chinese version. Um, it's just called the Three Body. It's just called Three Body, spelled out. Yeah. Uh, so Gooch, you got to shoot off in a sec. Yeah. I got, uh, I got a lot to do yet. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also um, supposed to pop on Gord's stream in a little bit. No, yeah. My voice is absolutely fucked, but it's his sports movie thing, and I love sports movies, so I've got to be on that. Do you got anything you want to recommend or any stuff you got coming up? Uh, me? Yeah. Um, I will be doing Scavenger's Reign uh, in a few hours. Uh, Enzo will be there, I'm, and Hell we got yeah. a we got a, a, pa- a big panel. We'll be reviewing episode three. Uh, tomorrow night, I have... Uh, the interview with Orbital Bacon. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I think this is his first interview, I believe. Yeah, he so, uh, he and, normally he normally streams with Zero Gravity Egg, right? Yeah, um, he is uh, a very well known uh, YouTuber. Um, and then Thursday, we the premiere of uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Um, looking forward to doing that with uh, again uh, the crew. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. And, is that uh, is that an animation? It's all animation. Yeah, I do a lot of the the animation reviews. Yeah. Um, that's where I've kind of directed my channel to take on is uh, take on it's the just, animated series reviews and then uh, break scamming. it down. These are, these are stills from Scamming yeah. Rain. I I think we've talked about it briefly before. Um, yeah, man, it looks good. Um, it's excellent. It's excellent. Um, well, I, I'd, I'd ask you to come on, but it's really late at night, so I don't know if you're no, no, available. I'm, I'm going to pop yeah. on gourds, but that'll be it uh, for me. No, I mean, in, just in general. Uh, yeah. if, if there was ever the chance you wanted to pop on, uh, you're more than welcome. Man, someday, uh, I'll get, I'll, someday I'll get on for sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what I'll be doing. And then, of course, Saturday, I'm on Saturday Night Hypnosis, and I'll be floating around all their channels. So uh, that's me in a nutshell. All right. All right. uh fab man well listen I'll, I'll, we'll let you go we're only going on for about another 20 minutes but uh yeah. we'll let you go i was about to recommend irish wish starring <laughs> Lindsay lohan <laughs> yes. so, uh, i'll see you this. guys uh later <laughs> that's my cue to leave says <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take care guys i'll see you all right, all right buddy
Have fun. I'm not joking. I did watch Irish Wish and I did like it. <laughs> and Lindsay Lohan was looking hot in that movie. It was like, what the hell? She's like, she wasn't looking like a drugged out uh, loser. Oh, so she's looking uh, at she, pretty good look. So she's good looking again now. It was a Netflix. Um, um, so I heard that it was like an AI movie um, made for NFT bros. None of that is true. I was actually disappointed when I saw it and found out it was just your standard run of the mill um, Hallmark style uh, romance movie involving an Irish uh, genie, basically, you know, monkey's paw type situation. Um, yeah, but you should like that. Young... You like that whole, you like that whole Mac shit, though, don't you? It's not. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an acquired taste, but this was not offensive or stupid or cringe. It was actually uh, pretty all around um, enjoyable. Uh, Leroy, we were talking about better stuff earlier, I swear. But yeah, I forgot I did watch this, and I thought I should mention it. I, since you guys are going to watch it, I mean, it's basically uh, Lindsay Lohan is a uh, book editor for a famous uh, author, and uh, she kind of has the hots for him because he's like a millionaire and stuff. And he's like hints that you know he couldn't have done any of this with her without her, and they're a great partner. But guess what? She accident he accidentally meets mm -hmm. her um, Asian friend and falls in love with her and proposes to her, and they're going to get married in Ireland a year later. So she's at the wedding and she um, encounters this Irish uh, genie, basically, who uh, shows up when you sit on some haunted uh, park bench. And um, she makes the wish that she wishes she was marrying this author. And she, she like spins the wind and the leaves fly. And then she wakes up in bed and she has this uh, husband. <laughs> this author is like in love with her now and they're getting married. And the Asian girl is now one of her bridesmaids. But there is this like romance with this uh, photographer fella that is coming. And I think the whole gist of the movie is like they weren't meant to be. She's meant to be with the photographer guy. Uh, even after she gets her wish, she quickly realizes that, no, my uh, my husband, author guy belongs with this Asian lady. And I belong with this dude who looks like my little brother, Aldo. Um, but yes, um, there's a cute little movie. There's like beer drinking and Irish uh, music shandies, uh, whatever. <laughs> Me and, um, me, and, me and Jason always said Ed Spielers is like the baby Jason Fleming. He looks like him when yeah. he was younger. There you uh, go. I would say if this movie was written by AI, it was damn impressive uh, because, I mean, obviously it hits all the tropes. It hits all the marks. Uh, watch it with your girlfriend. She might like it or she might hate you. Who knows? <laughs> um, you probably won't get laid, but it'll be a good movie to fall asleep to. You know what I mean? Let's uh, Let's see who wrote it. It's written by... Kirsten right. Hansen. So the thing is, if it is an AI, I've been seeing news articles saying this movie was like AI garbage. And if like if that's not true, and this woman wrote it, I mean, she could technically sue these news articles for libel. Yeah, right? I, I think she, I think she should because um, Hallmark. There's a there's a girl I interviewed uh, who who writes these movies. It's not this lady, but she did a couple of their. You know, you know there's always doing Christmas movies. Guy falls in love with good looking girl, but he can't right. be with, with her because he's been hit by a car and now he's been miniaturized and turned into a dwarf and he's trapped in a jar. Sure. That, kind, that kind I, of story, you know, right? I would watch the shit out of that movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Um, by the way, we, we're going to do a stream in the future where we actually, we invent a movie. We're going to call it invent a movie and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to write a movie on a stream. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's coming up on the oh, outcast man. creative channel. You heard it here first. Um, so, um, yeah, but uh, no, Kirsten Hansen is a real writer. She's done plenty of these kind of things. Yeah. So she should so. absolutely sue sue them, Kirsten. Sue them. <laughs> we'll back you. Come on the channel. I talk agree. to us about it. Um, you should sue them if people have been saying that. It might seem like it's an AI script because Hallmark stuff is by the numbers. You know, they know what they want. They want, you know, they want romance. They want a bit of drama. They want sort of an inciting incident at a wedding you know it's all it's all standard stuff um but uh, it's it's not rocket science scripts okay so can always guarantee on at least one hallmark on the nielsen ratings okay i've got a yeah, movie it's to been a while since i brought up one so i figured <laughs> i need to let you all know i did watch this so my next recommendation is shirley this is available on netflix directed by oh. and written by john ridley starring regina king as Shirley Chisholm, the only black woman who's ever briefly tried to run for uh, president, part of the civil rights movement. Uh, Regina King is absolutely effing amazing in this part. Uh, I put this on as a kind of movie to fall asleep to very, very late at night, thinking, you know, yeah, I'll be able to sort of conk out on this one. 
<laughs> that was not the case. It's actually got a really good script. It's got a great supporting cast. Um, she's really good in it. I found myself surprisingly engaged in a uh, sort of wasn't sure if I'd be too interested in the topic. The thing that makes it really interesting is all the backstabbing that went on around her in her own party and including her own fellow black politicians who betrayed her and uh, stuff. And they don't pull any punches about that. And um, I, so I just thought it was really good. It's obviously a period piece. Um, that's um, Huey Newton from the Black Panthers. It turns up in it briefly. But yeah, it's a, it's a good film. It's about the 72 election. And um, that's uh, Governor, uh, the, the Gov Governor Wallace, the guy that got shot. Um, and then she caused massive controversy because he was a known racist. But when he got shot, um, uh, she went to visit him in hospital. And um, yeah, so that's a really, really well played scene. Um, it's really good. So I really liked it. And it's also one of oh, Lance Riddick's, oh. it's one of Lance Riddick's ro last roles, which oh, is... Rest in peace, man. Jesus. Yeah. He's great. He is great in this. Uh, yeah, such a great actor, man. If the subject matter doesn't interest you, uh, watch it for this alone. Um, I really liked it. Uh, Leroy's already excited for Shogun tomorrow. Uh, he's already given it nine and a half out of ten, episode six. And Shirley is good. He liked it as well. Yeah. Uh, we are going to talk about Manhunt. We're not going to talk about it today, but we are going to talk about Manhunt. That, that is a good show. You guys should check that out um, about the uh, assassination of Lincoln. Is that Jordan um, Peterson next to him? <laughs> yeah, he does look a bit like him. So, uh, yeah, so I recommend Shirley. Um, and uh, you've got your other man in there. Um, right. So, it, it's yeah, it's a good show. It's a uh, one movie, not a big commitment in terms of time. And like I said, I put it on to kind of fall asleep too. And I was like, oh, man, this is engaging. It's going to keep me awake. Uh, really rate this actor as well. He was fantastic uh seen him in a couple of other things i think he was in three terrence howard yeah terrence yeah. howard in, this guy, this guy yeah. was in three billboards he invented math this guy was in three billboards outside missouri um yeah terrence howard and this is when they're talking about what states they can win and all of dude, that dude imagine but, if he came back as the new king full hmm. circle baby <laughs> But that's a superhero thing, and I just don't give a shit. I know. So, I'm just being God, funny. God, it was a good movie. It was a good movie, God. Surely. He was doing an airplane joke. And I like... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I see what he's doing. Thanks. Uh. Yeah, I'll be. I'll actually be discussing that with uh, Smilex on Friday as well. We'll yeah, Leroy, about, uh, he, he, was, he was doing a uh, he was yeah. doing a naked gun on us there. You, I you, am uh, serious. I don't call me <laughs> surely. Know. Yeah, we've got. They're all they're all coming in now. Tell call call me Shirley. Me Shirley. Yeah, <laughs> Shirley. Um, anyone know how Lance Riddick died? Uh, I I did look into that actually. Um, but he is definitely gone. He died suddenly. That's what happened. That's all you need to know. I yeah, got it. It wasn't official. Just <laughs> Enzo. Enzo got it. Good. I'm a bit poorly, so you'll you'll have to forgive me. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I really like this film. It was good. Uh, I've got one more recommendation before we kind of start to wrap up. Uh, has anyone else got anything they want to recommend that they haven't? We haven't covered yet. <laughs> Dan, Lance <laughs> Reddick died. Yes, he died uh, about last year sometime. Lance, Sorry. Did you check out today? Sorry to break the news to you. Shit. Yeah. Where have you been, Dan? I did. I did a dedication yeah. to him on my channel. Well, to be yeah. fair, he keeps having movies coming out and stuff. So, you know, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, I mean. Did you watch the, really the, new tra him. the new trailer for the new Bad Boys movie? I think it's like the comedy seems pretty on par with the first three films. Yeah, Jesus. I was seeing Bad Boys being brought up. I didn't realize there was a Bad Boys 5 coming. I was like, oh, uh, boy. Well, uh, was, I still haven't seen four. part four. Okay. When I saw the post for the trailer for that, I actually thought that it was a joke and it was a parody. So I didn't realize it was. Um, yeah. Are we on number four or five? I don't oh, know. Four. Okay, so Bad yeah. Boys Three, Bad Boys Forever. I never saw that one. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll 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 talk about that before we wrap up. Yeah. Um, I want to recommend this. This is on Apple Plus. Uh, we talked about it briefly before. It's called The New Look. Uh, Northern, you saw a couple of eps, right? 
Yeah, I've not even had a chance to finish watching it because uh, there's other shows that I've um, was recommended by you as well, and I've still not finished them. It's it's uh, it's, it's I'm really getting backlogged here on the uh, show. Yeah, um, you're it's slacking some... on your homework, boy. <laughs> Dude, tell me, oh, tell me, classes. tell me about it. Tell me about it. Um, I would recommend it. It's the true story of the rivalry between Coco Chanel and Christian Dior. Uh, the biggest criticism, and it's a a valid criticism is not enough of the lead cast. The lead cast are French and they're all playing true life, real French characters. However, as we know, to get these things commissioned, you've got to have big names. So they've got Malkovich, Mendelssohn, uh, Binoche and uh, Williams, Macy Williams in it. They're all very, very good. Uh, it's a period piece. It's set initially before World War II, covers the uh, time of occupation in the France under the Nazis. Uh, Macy Williams' character ends up in a concentration camp. Coco Chanel collaborates with the Nazis, which is well known. And a part of the story is about how she avoids going to prison. Christian Dior is trying to hide his homosexuality. Uh, it's just a, it's a very, very well-made piece. And it's got some great supporting uh, actors in it as well, uh, doing a wonderful job in in some of the other roles. You've got Glenn Close there. Um, and uh, anything with Glenn Close in is always worth uh, watching so i recommend it if you like your history uh if uh um that kind of thing um i'd give this a solid eight out of ten uh very well acted ex extremely good production uh design really captures the period of the 40s and the 50s and it the whole show just looks amazing um i, I think um mendelssohn will probably get an emmy uh, nice. for this yeah and deservedly deservedly so so uh yeah, uh, Leroy can't wait to see Gladiator 2. <laughs> well, we'll be reviewing it so uh, when it comes out. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, it depends though. You said there was one other thing you wanted to mention, or did we cover that? Oh, you've gone all quiet. Went to the bathroom. He's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is he run to the bar? I was uh, getting mother some pistachios. Oh, okay. Did there, Was there one other thing you wanted to mention before we begin to wrap up? No, I think that's everything. I remembered Irish Spring, so we're good. So, Irish um, so for people that didn't see it, we had our uh, special stream of The Thing, the musical. Um, where we great. had our, our guests in. I laughed my ass off backstage. Yeah. <laughs> I still uh, not forgive was... Malcolm McDuck for what happened on that fucking day. He caught blood, me. He really did. It, it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, we Apparently, had a... Muppets are cold-blooded creatures. And they drink banana milkshakes instead of coffee. Uh, yeah. What else are some good stuff? Yeah, we, we, we learned all kinds of things. Uh, one of the one of the guys is having an affair with Miss Piggy. Apparently, we can't verify if that's true. Uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, oh boy, it was, it was a pretty uh, pretty interesting and eye opening uh, stream. Uh, let's just go around quickly and do the promo stuff. So I'm just going to remind people I got the five days at Memorial Special thing coming up yeah. on. Sunday. I think that's all I've got this week. Uh, I might, I'll be doing some gaming stuff, of course, <laughs> but um, uh, that's all I've got uh, until next Tuesday. So Sunday at eight o'clock UK time. I should have two guests on it, um, but you know, subject to commitments, yeah. so you never know. But uh, I will be doing the stream regardless. But I'm, I'm so as far as I know, they're 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 still coming. So uh, fingers fingers crossed for that. Uh, Blue, what you got coming up, man? Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually watching for the first time with Lord Toxic. You know this, Lance. You ever seen Chinatown with Jack Nicholson? Yeah, God, great film. He's the only guy that hasn't seen Chinatown. That's why I swear. I just, it, what's coming yeah, to, it's, it's coming to theaters for tomorrow for one time only uh, after we do oh, Shogun. Wow. Yeah, it's going to come out. It's uh, the 50th anniversary. I just, I just can't think of I just, You're going to see it on a big screen? Yes. Damn. Are there yeah. any cinemas that Toxic isn't banned from, though? Because that, that might be a <laughs> Yeah, he has he has some around his um his his area that uh blue collar that, uh, is the one that's getting banned soon. He's <laughs> like, you're, you're we're losing money on you coming yeah. in here every day. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I talked to my mother about it, and she's like, Yeah, Chris, you didn't see Chinatown. I'm like, I just I just can't think of it. I don't know why. It's so Michael Sarah, I mean Gord King, can't believe that you've not seen Chinatown. Yeah. Well, just shows, like, I've, I've seen ten thousand movies in my lifetime, man. It's just I'm starting to forget shit. <laughs> Dan Candy, the good, man, man who didn't know that Lance Riddick has passed away, uh, does know that Chinatown is fucking yeah. amazing. 
So I'm I'm, I'm going to do a, a reactionary, reactionary reactionary video tomorrow. You're so drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm just learning. <laughs> <laughs> no, then anything you want to plug, mate? Uh, not much except for um, my airplane stream on the uh, Bastards breakdowns coming up on Friday, uh, yeah. eleven o'clock on my time. And I don't know what I might do for a review next week. I was thinking maybe uh, I do Roadhouse to something relevant, or I might do the very underrated at close range because I've kind of started to gain the idea of doing a review on that myself. Well, yeah. gentlemen, don't forget uh, set your uh, yeah. your timers now uh, between now and the fourteenth of April. I might actually move that back a week but at the minute mm. it's it's still on the 14th of april uh, i'm going to be doing that special episode of chew the fat on special bulletin special episode on special bulletin um i was trying to find my artwork for it but i, I can't find it um that uh that depends though it's done for me but uh yeah it's scheduled at the minute oh there it is it's scheduled at the minute for uh the 14th of um april uh the whole film is on youtube so if you haven't seen right. it guys check it out it's a very very good movie first directing <laughs> debut of director ed zwick uh, yeah. who made the last samurai Lance glory Lance. i'll tell you next week i'm look. i don't care i'm looking forward to i know what it is two days two days we get to see pink godzilla <laughs> i can't wait to see it i'm, I'm excited I'm, I'm i'm less excited about that than you it'll um, be nice and stupid and fun exactly well um thanks to my panel Gucci. are you gonna want to know what i got coming up uh no yes, <laughs> i got I a Sorry, full dude, length, I look listen full length commentary tomorrow for Ooh. the movie space camp oh my god uh, Leah Thompson, the kelly the preston and yeah. the gorgeous kate capshaw she is so hot in this movie she's like the teacher who's like teaching the kids about space camp she's like Running around in like spaghetti strap tank tops with no bra the whole movie. Holy Lord, sign me up for Space Camp. But also, it's a movie about a bunch of kids who accidentally get launched in space. It's so stupid. So enjoy. We're going to have a fun time watching it tomorrow. This this film um, got canned because yeah. of the a challenger, challenger exploded disaster. the same year it came out. <laughs> it did. And and the funny thing is, I remember like, because, you know, like this is the 80s. I go and see movies, three, four of them a week. And these were all actors whose career I was following. These are like the kids that were in Iron Eagle and, you know, all those war games and so on. Enjoy the and I, so I remember when I saw the, the trailer for this, I was, I was kind of hyped. I was thinking, that's kind of a cool idea. These kids end up accidentally getting launched into space. And then literally they just started trailering it when the Challenger... Um, yeah, boom. I think they even have shots of the actual Challenger, like on the dock at one point. They definitely... Yeah. The, the problem that caused the malfunction that causes them to go up in a space is literally the same thing that happened to the Challenger. That one yeah. of the rocket couplings uh, failed. Yeah. <laughs> and they literally have to get launched in space or the ship will explode. That's basically the uh, the justification. Yeah. It's yeah. very funny, very stupid. It's like, like I said in the commentary, it's like, it's not just like you accidentally launched some kids in space. There's like 10 things you did wrong in succession that caused this to happen. You idiots. Um, also, Tom Skerritt is in it. He plays the control uh, head guy, uh, Kate Capshaw's boyfriend, trying to get her back down. The uh, but the movie, Larry, listen, Larry this is fun fact. I, I even, yeah, yeah, I even bring it up in the in the commentary. But like, the movie starts getting so intense towards like the last uh, third that me and my cousin kind of stopped talking, and I had to like insert a bunch of jokes in post right. <laughs> because it gets so over the top. We're like holding our breath. <laughs> it was like gravity, but with kids. So Kelly, uh, also Kelly, Joaquin Phoenix, Kelly Preston's no longer with us. Isn't that John Travolta's? No, she passed away. Yeah, yeah she had, like, she had such a great very, set very on her too. She was in. Um, she was in Miss before Pearl. this. She was in Metal Storm: The Destruction of Jared Sin. Uh, oh, I, I know her from Mischief. That was the one. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, she was also uh, in. Yeah, uh, Joaquin uh, Phoenix is the like first movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Walking Phoenix, life. though, he's he's credited as Lee Phoenix in this movie, and he's like obsessed with Star Wars, so he keeps quoting it everywhere. It's cringe. Like, and the little robot it. is the worst character yeah. in the movie. He talks yeah. like this the whole movie. I'm a robot. I must save Walking Phoenix. That's, that's it's the worst. I hate it. It makes me want to kill myself. Do that voice. 
Yeah, yeah. Th- I do remember the robot from the film being very, very <laughs> annoying. James loves Joaquin. Must send him into space. It's literally just like that. That's exactly what he sounds like. It's so stupid. I, I want to hear a scream of that. Why would you program the robot to sound like that? Well, there you go. That's a huge <laughs> plug for... Uh, holy shit, is that a Blue Peter build? Uh, correct. Dan... I'm pretty sure Dan. I'm pretty sure Dan. You know, you know that already. You're joking. You're, yeah, he's he's being funny at this point, right? I, I, I can't I, tell. I, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, she is dead. She's no longer with us. Kenny Baker might not be in it. I don't. I don't. And there was no tiny people. No, because that robot's too small f- to fit no. a person in. I think there was like some sort of remote control rig. And okay, so that's it from us, guys. We're gonna um. Instead of playing out our uh, yeah. our outro, we're going to give you some songs from the the thing, oh, the musical <laughs> right. to go out on. So you can you can check those out. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. Groovy.